The impulse is for a collision, okay? All those other problems we've been doing, we said we haven't, we haven't considered what happens when it actually hits the ground. We haven't considered a collision. So for these, now when we have a collision, uh, we can think about impulse, all right, force times time. Uh, so if it's a constant force or an average force, then it's force times time. I'm going to leave impulse. I'm not going to write impulses like I or G. Some books have different letters that they assign for impulse. I'm just going to put FT and just kind of remind myself it, it's force times time. The units, let's think about the units for impulse, could be, uh, we will just kind of leave them in the units that they are in, uh, Newton times seconds or pound times seconds. Okay, so an impulse of a collision is force times time. The momentum is mass times velocity. So just kind of a reminder that momentum is mass times velocity. These might be related. These might be related. If we looked at our units for momentum, uh, this is kilogram, this is meters per second. Those look like, is that different than a uh, Newton times a second? Actually, they're the same. And if you, a Newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. So these are related. Uh, all right, anyway, when there's a collision, the, the impact, it, when there is a collision or an impact between two objects, energy may not be conserved. So we can't do, we can't always do conservation of energy, but we can do conservation of momentum. Okay. We can do conservation of momentum. There are two ways, or actually, sorry, let me kind of derive this real easily. Uh, it's not bad at all. Uh, and it's very similar if you look at the derivation for conservation of energy. But if impulse is an integral of FDT, and if we substitute in MA for force, integral of MA DT. Now, when we substituted F equals MA, we assume that mass was constant. Mass is constant. Uh, take it out, integral A DT. So now impulse is equal, say, equal to, and again, it's not always for some time. It's only for some time if it's constant. Uh, it is equal to, uh, what's integral A DT? We have an equation here, uh, is integral of DV. So M integral DV. And what is the integral of dv? It'd be v, you know, two minus v1 or v final minus v initial. So here we have an equation. Ft, impulse, is equal to, uh, let me say, m v final minus m v initial. What is that in words? The impulse is equal to the change in momentum. The impulse is equal to the change in momentum. Now we can rearrange this and just write it like conservation of momentum. So, so maybe you, you like to organize your thoughts and your problems like this. An impulse is equal to change. And does that make sense? If you put an impulse on an object, you change its momentum, right? A collision changes the velocity of an object. An impulse is equal to the change of momentum. Or the, uh, let's you know, bring this over to the left-hand side, M, the initial, the mo initial momentum, plus any impulse that we add to our object or that, that we apply to our uh, box or, you know, object, uh, would be the final momentum. So let's write this in words, the initial momentum. And let me say of the system, sometimes we could only be looking at one object. Sometimes we might be looking at two objects that both have mass. And so this, uh, the impulse for both of these, let me say uh, the external impulse. The external, if we have something that's being applied to our object, from some, some outside force. We'll talk about 
whether it's external or internal. All right, equals the final momentum of the system. Now, does this remind you of energy and conservation energy? The work equals change in kinetic energy or the conservation of energy, you know, the all the potential and kinetic energy initial plus any work equals the energy final. Uh, so I, it reminds me of, of that. So very similar. And you've got two ways to organize your thought process, but it's really the same equation. But anyway, we'll use this equation when we have collision. We'll use this equation when we have an object that is hitting, we'll talk about some cases, but when it's hitting another object. But one big thing about this one, um, this one, direction matters. All right, direction matters. Uh, th these are you, we, could, we could think about these as vectors. This, this is a vector. This is really two equations, right? Our x equation and our y equation. Y'all know how I like to do 2D problems. In many cases, I like to kind of separate x and y. And so it's almost like you've got, you've got your x momentum equation, your x velocity momentum, the x force for the impulse, the x velocity. So you've got your x equation and you've got your y equation. As opposed to energy, that was only one equation. We could only solve for one unknown with that energy. Right, those things were squared. It was velocity squared. It didn't matter that the velocity was at you know a 25 degree angle. But this one, it does matter. This one does matter. I, I need to look at my x velocity. You know, take the cosine 25 of that velocity. Look at my y velocity. So this is really two equations. You might can solve for two unknowns if you want to. Okay, uh, I think that's good with with the. Uh, notes. We'll do some problems, but that's that's the idea. When we have collisions, let's use impulse momentum, and direction really matters.